Hello, this is HD Wingnut, and today I am going to show you an overview of the new Sager 14-inch um, gaming notebook, um, the Sager NP8640, uh, based on the Clevo P640RE. Um, this particular uh, laptop was provided by LPC Digital. You can go to lpc-digital.com um, if you're looking to uh, purchase a uh, Sager notebook. Um, and there are other vendors, but I've worked with uh, Larry at LPC for years, and he's he can give you a pretty good deal on these. So, in any case, um, this does come with a uh, GTX 970M with three gigabytes of GDDR5. Um, I personally wouldn't let the three gigs of GDDR5 scare you. I know people are so concerned about having more VRAM, etc. I've been running with a 970M three gigabyte for years couple of years now with my P650 um, SE and it's handled everything like a, a champ. Um, I don't really don't think you'll have much issue with that um, but that aside um, we can look into that later with benchmarks. Um, let's see let's go through this. Um, in addition the CPU it has an i7-6700HQ uh, quad-core hyper-threaded CPU um, and uh, when you purchase this laptop, this is pretty much everything that you get with it, the laptop. A microfiber cloth, an optional uh, Windows 10 uh, USB drive to reload Windows 10, should you ever want to do a clean install. This does not come with the drivers in here. It's basically just like a clean USB uh, install of, of Windows 10. But they do give you a DVD with the drivers, although this does not come with the DVD drive. But uh, you can either download it from Clevo or Sager's website. Um, but uh, this particular uh, review unit did come pre-installed with Windows 10 and when you do order it uh, pre-installed with Windows 10 I think 7 might be an option but the way the drivers come pre-installed as well as the uh, the Clevo um, utilities like uh, Clevo Control Center and the backlight keyboard and all that stuff and obviously then you also get the user's guide um, wanted to show you let's see here the power supply itself is a um, 19 and a half volt, 9.23 amp, and it's 180 watt. So um, they've actually made great strides in the size of this thing. Um, 180 watt, and it's only like six inches long, which is what that's you know 150 uh, millimeters by about three inches wide. You know, so that equates to what 70, 75 millimeters, and then about an inch thick. So about 25 mils or so, and the laptop itself is about, um, I don't know, you know, the 13 and 3 quarters inch wide by, if you're that interested in it or not, I don't know, by about 10 inches deep, um, and it's about an inch thick. You know, you're looking at about 22, 23 mils maybe um, to the bottom panel, and then these feet probably add another, you know, five mils, eight mils or whatever to it. So either way it's 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 not super thin but it's it's got a uh, pretty good cooling, pretty good power. Um, as far as weights are concerned, if you're interested in that, the laptop itself, let that count down there. Four pounds, ten and a half ounces. Um, that's with uh, a two and a half inch SSD and two sticks of RAM, and the power supply itself, one pound ten ounces. Now, looking at the uh, physical features of this laptop, you can see it's a uh, a metal construction. Um, the lid is at least here. Um, the speaker bar back here is metal. Um, this here is plastic and when we open it up you can see the uh, surrounding bezel with the LCD is plastic. Um, this is also like a, a hard plastic, like an ABS type of plastic. You can see the keyboard here. The keyboard is backlit, backlit white light. You can change intensity a couple of ways um, with the function F4 key here. So it'll go like bright, medium, low, and then off. Um, the uh, LCD itself is a 1080p, it's 14 inch, um, and it's a uh, 60 hertz panel. It is not G-Sync, it is not G-Sync. 
um, it uh, uses Optimus, and Optimus kind of precludes the system from using G-Sync, at least for now. Um, so if you're looking for that, this does not support G-Sync. You can see the uh, touchpad here is uh, nice and large. Um, it's got independent uh, mouse buttons. And the keyboard itself is actually, uh, I, I haven't used it much so far, but it's it's pretty quiet when you type. It's not like real clackety-clack, and it's it's got, I mean, it's a good, it feels good when I type. You know, it's got about medium travel distance. Um, you can see it's a little flexible here. It's only because I removed the screws off the bottom panel to, uh, so I can show you the insides of this machine as well. Um, so I think that's it about here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the ports around the system. Starting at the back, you can see that there's the uh, power port, nothing special there in the vents. Over on the right side, there's the uh, black gigabit ethernet, two USB 3.0 ports, um, a SSD or SD MMC card. That's just a dummy for that. Uh, close that up. And then a SIM slot. I believe that's an optional module you can get if you want to do uh, LTE or whatever um, wireless networking. Um, in the front, really nothing, just some status lights over here. And then over on the uh, left side, um, you've got two, uh, um, well, you have an HDMI and two uh, Display Port 1.2, version 1.2, and this I believe is only 1.4, but I can't confirm that. Um, but still, you should be able to get 4K at 30 hertz, I believe, with um, 1.4. Then two more USB 3.0 ports. So that's four total USB 3.0 ports. And then uh, your 8th inch or 3.5 millimeter uh, audio jacks, microphone, headphone, and uh, optical or SPDIF out. Looking underneath, um, you can see the pads, you can see the uh, vents here um, for the fans and uh, the multiple screws. Now you notice that there's no battery exposed here, the battery is internal, um, which seems to be more and more common. Um, but we'll take a look at that in a second. But to access the guts of this thing, you're looking at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 screws. That's not a screw, that's an access port to pop off the keyboard. Um, remove these two screws and push there and you can pop it off. So you don't necessarily have to take off the bottom panel to do that. But there's no really reason to do that unless you want to change your keyboard. Because there's not any uh, components underneath the keyboard like sometimes there can be in Sega notebooks. I'll show you that as well. So in order to pop this off, it's kind of difficult, but I think the front corners here, you can get underneath it. It's going to work your way around. And voila. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit here. It's probably good. Um, going around the system here, you can see there's the battery. It's like a 45 watt hour battery. Uh, not real substantial, so and I did do a quick movie test on this, and it ran in in airplane mode and power saver mode, backlit keyboard off. Um, it only ran about two and a half hours, so not the greatest battery life, but not awful either. Um, it supports up, I believe, up to nine and a half mil, uh, two and a half inch SSD or hard drive, um, SATA three, um, M2 um, up to eighty mil, um, M2, and this is PCIe. Or see, there you go, 80 mils, um, multiple lengths, up to um, PCIe or SATA versions of the M.2. So you have a little bit of expansion options there. Um, you can see the wireless card. This does support DDR4. This particular model came with two sticks of uh, eight gigabyte DDR4 2133 megahertz RAM, um, and uh, these are Samsung RAM. Good. But either way, um, you can. I believe that there are 16 gigabyte sticks of DDR4 RAM available as well, so you can load up to 32 gigs in this thing. And then obviously you've got your GPU underneath this heat pipe and the CPU under here. You can tell that they uh, share a common heat pipe. They do have fans on either side, but they do share the the cooling. Um, this is Skylake CPU, and uh, I have noticed I did do some basic uh, testing, and I was able to undervolt this thing by 150 millivolts easily and uh, it dropped temperatures at peak temperatures by a good 15 degrees or so. Um, I'm also going to go and do a repaste and, and validate the uh, temperature drop due to that as well. Um, 
So, I'm trying to think of this. Oh, last thing I want to show you is mentioned about the keyboard. Um, in order to remove the keyboard, basically open up your lid like this. And here's the port that I mentioned earlier, but I'll give a closer look right there. Once the screws are removed, all you got to do is push on that. Poof, there goes your keyboard. But you can see there's absolutely nothing underneath there, right? So just the connectors for touchpad and for the keyboard and who knows what else. So no, no real reason to go underneath there unless you need to change your, your keyboard. So um, that should about do it for now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do some regular benchmarking and uh, report back on this, do some temperature and with the undervolting and, and report back on the temperature differential there too, which I think is pretty phenomenal. Uh, gives you um, options, you know, it should reduce fan noise as well as just keep your system running cooler, which is good for it. So in any case, um, hope that's helpful and uh, thanks for listening.